We begin tonight right here in New York, where leaders from around the world gathered at the United Nations for the start of the General Assembly. Today, President Trump visiting Dayton, Ohio, and El Paso, Texas, the site of two mass shootings over the weekend. There are actually so many hands-free options, but that doesn't seem to be working. Now, are Bluetooth calls or GPS systems actually too distracting? I'm here in Angkor Wat, the largest religious monument in the world. I'm here in London, England. I'm here in Batambang, Cambodia. Before walking to the site, I suit up for protection. Then we make our way to an area getting cleared. So crazy finding, the CMAC deminers have actually found a landmine and a UXO right there. So I just hit about 76 miles per hour on this electric motorcycle. Here in the E-Village, you can try amazing new inventions like this. And I'm telling you now, I might have to get a motorcycle myself. Imagine taking a dip between flights at this infinity rooftop pool with panoramic views of JFK. Humpback whale was spotted just over there in that area. Oh, you know what? It's actually coming over to this side. Every five minutes, we seem to be moving just to catch these guys. A very exciting day today in New York as a million people gather to support the U.S. women's soccer team. This is a huge role. How did you prepare to play this iconic character? Did you meet with Gary? He's seen the film, so I'm glad that we're still friends. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So he liked your performance, I'm guessing. Well enough. And I'd absolutely say this is one of the most confusing cases that the American people have seen this year. You know, what's his connection to the Kremlin? Yes, well, he is a lawyer and a political activist that is very yeah. well known in Russia for being one of the top figureheads um, of this movement against Vladimir Putin. And yesterday he met with Angela Merkel, today Emmanuel Macron, but Boris Johnson doesn't seem to be getting what he wants, does he? No, he does not. Correspondent Ariel Hickson, here now with more. Ariel? Yes, Eric, those numbers are startling. The world's second largest Ebola outbreak has now passed 3,000 cases and 2,000 deaths since August of last year. What is the weirdest or strangest thing that you have recycled? So I personally love the grosser the better. Okay. What would you say is the most tough aspect of being a young trans teen in this day and age? The fact that society isn't fully supportive of us. To discuss, let's bring in Betsy Rosenberg, an environmental reporter and climate commentator. Welcome, Betsy. Thank you. Great to be here. Yes. Well, now it was a big day for climate Huge. change. Huge day. What was the big impact here, if there was any? Well, not enough, of course, but um, there is something in the air that's different. You know, I've been covering this beat for about 20 years, and this is different. And with Greta and with that powerful speech that she had, they're very passionate. I mean, she, she started off with saying, how dare you? She really did have a point there where it's a youth who are really taking a big step here. And you mentioned, of course, these big powers who aren't doing much. What can they do going forward to really get to at least the level of young people today? We have to elect somebody who understands that science is real. That's the first thing. So it's about how we vote. There's so many factors here. There's so many protests that are happening between today Huge. and Friday. I mean, will these still have the same impact, people walking out? I think they have to. You cannot ignore 250,000 people. And that is an excellent report. Thank you so much, Betsy Thank Rosenberg. You. You can hear the chanting happening right now. It's very energetic. Now, these demonstrations are happening across the country, pretty much demanding that the Attorney General release the report to Congress. Now, critics of President Trump have said that this report could have something suspicious in it. And because the Attorney General missed the April 2nd deadline, people are getting increasingly wary. This is a outrage that these guys are withholding this document. Here in New York, people are pretty much communicating that the American people have a right to the report and that secrecy is not okay. Now, we'll see in the upcoming days if the government has any response to these mass protests and if the Attorney General decides to change his ways. Oh, it is steaming up right now as we speak. I mean, in the subway, it can get about 20 degrees hotter than it is outside, but in a global perspective, hot temperatures are predicted from Oklahoma to New England. About 15 million people will be affected. This is the thing about the heat. It's all sunny. It's beautiful outside. Some people want to go outside in the sun. Stay away from that. They say avoid the sun. Avoid the beaches if possible. Stay inside. Drink lots of water. Everyone's going to be inside with that AC and that could lead to a blackout. Now a blackout with soaring hot temperatures, not a lot of fun.
Jeffrey Epstein was found unresponsive in his cell around 6.30 a.m. Saturday morning in this facility behind me, the Metropolitan Corrections Center. Now, some details around his suicide. He was not on suicide watch when they found him, but he was on suicide watch about two weeks before and should have been checked on every 30 minutes. Another detail is that his cellmate was removed the day before his suicide. So there's a lot of criticism as to how this facility handled this situation. Now, this may not change the investigation into his misconduct, Conduct, but it will change the way that victims approach this. Many victims were looking for some type of solace. Instead, more victims may actually come forward because they will be less intimidated by the fact that he is no longer here and may be even more honest about these abuse allegations. Some attorneys also suspect that some of these victims will file a civil suitcase against his estate. Here in New York, I'm Ariel Hickson for I-24 News. There's always something new popping up in New York City, so I checked out one of the latest attractions downtown. The Museum of Illusion is an Insta-friendly museum that plays mind games with visitors worldwide. Take a look. Illusions typically defy reality, so now I'm going to the home of optical illusions in New York City, put my mind to the test. I brought my fellow correspondent, Marie Jean Treat, to come and check it out. In the Museum of Illusions, it's hard to tell what's actually real. Have you questioned your concept of reality versus illusion? Yeah, already. <laughs> and we've only just begun. Nothing is as it seems, right? As most of the exhibit turns your world upside down. <laughs> What is the Museum of Illusions? Museum of Illusions is all about perception, um, seeing things that may not be there. Are we in an illusion right now? We is could be in one be? right now. You never know. You never know. I could be over there. The exhibit has 80 different optical illusions scattered throughout the museum, altering concepts our brain takes for granted, like space. Take a look at this. It looks pretty impossible, right? This hole going into this shape. Depth. There's always just one of you everywhere else, but here, there's more than one. And even our reflection. <laughs> Could you see my eyes? <laughs> yeah, I can see your eyes. Oh, I see yours. Each trick is designed to play games with your mind. And if you're not too careful, even you can become the illusion. Visitors tend to experience the impossible. What I see is not necessarily what my wife sees. Oh, interesting. Yeah, oh. yeah. That might mean something. Well, I don't know. <laughs> but in the end, it's all good fun, challenging even the biggest skeptics to see beyond. It's that time of the year again. Ooh. Bow! when thousands flock to the Javits Center for the largest comic book and pop culture gathering in the country. What brings you back every year? Oh, I'm just a nerd. If you take a look behind me, New York City Comic Con is packed and pretty insane. We're about to step into the madness right now. Let's go. From the endless exhibits and countless characters, it's hard to keep up. I'm gonna play a little game and try to guess some of the characters that are here today. Are you an anime character? He has an anime, he's a game character. Are you Belle? I am. Oh my gosh, <laughs> gorgeous. Catwoman? No, close. Oh, darn it, come on. Are you Miles Morales? Uh, yeah, how'd you know? The cape? The cape, the cape did it. The fact okay. that he had the hat, like, half on. I think your mentor is here. Is he? Yeah, I think, I think actual Spider-Man. Oh. oh my gosh, That's what is cape. happening here? That's a no to the cape. Oh. Okay, no, I, I, never mind, Mr. Penny White, you're gonna freak me out. Oh, <laughs> like any convention, this one brings people together. My assistant. Oh, he's your assistant, okay, cool. <laughs> With some of the coolest and most creative activities. And we're back for the final version of my superhero right here. This is who she is, oh my goodness. She's doing her Spider-Man. She's doing her Spider-Man. Thing, and she is killing the game. Everyone here is so nice, giving compliments, taking pictures, and you don't really find that anywhere else. You know, you can be whoever you want to be. It's a good, it's a good time. So you can see Halloween has come early for thousands of people here in New York City. That's a wrap for Comic Con at the Javits Center. Back to you guys in the studio.